A uh, topic I wanted to touch on was something called Infodynamic Science Labs. It's most of you that have followed in for the last four years know that one of our strategies, and Charles talked about at the beginning, was to compete on user experience. And to do that, you need to build a core confidence in it. So we built our own interactive design agency inside Info called, um, we'll talk about the development's 110 creatives here on staff in New York. Uh, in a similar way, um, last year we decided to compete on data science and predictive analytics. And we believe that traditional transaction and applications that automate processes could be powered by big data, predictive algorithms, machine learning, uh, and so on. But again, to compete on this, you need to build a core confidence. So we created something called Info Dynamic Science Labs. Um, we hired someone uh, out of MIT. He's our chief scientist, uh, Dr. Ziad Nejmaldeen, and uh, based it in Kendall Square, which is a block from MIT in Boston, and uh, rapidly built out uh, a team of really, really solid uh, MIT data scientists. And these are guys that are interested in things like, I don't even know how these things are, but like option theory and machine vision and all, all that kind of stuff. And uh, built them into pods um, by industry and asked them to leverage data, uh, machine learning, and the cloud as a supercomputer to solve really big problems um, in the industries that we serve. So generally what they do is they work with customers to understand what are the problems you've never been able to solve before. And our customers generally, particularly if you're a mid-market customer, like think about a mid-market distributor or manufacturer, there's a lot of obstacles to wrapping <coughs> your arms around machine learning and big data, right? First of all, you don't have expertise in managing vast volumes of data, you know? That's clearly something we have an understanding when you look at that common science application I talked about. You know, we've, we've profiled 12% of the US working population, that's big data, you know? I was at a hospital yesterday in Nashville. It's one of our largest clinical um, integration customers. They run 1.5 billion transactions across our clinical network every month, right? So it's big data. So we have an expertise in that that we can help bring to our, our customers. The second thing is they don't have expertise. Uh, they, don't, they can't afford to buy the infrastructure that you need to run a lot of these algorithms, right? And most of the time when you do go buy all this compute and storage, it sits dormant when you're not running these algorithms. Leveraging Amazon as, as you know, the world's largest supercomputer, we can have this on-demand elastic supercomputer that we can run these models across. But the biggest issue they have is they don't have the expertise in operations and research. They can't afford to go out and hire an OR department and get these guys from MIT. And that's where Dynamic Science Labs comes into it. So we bring a complete solution um, to the table. So we sit down with customers and say, what are the really large problems that you haven't been able to solve? And, we, and together we identify what those are. And the harder they are to solve, the better, because they're very, very valuable. Then we do prototyping, we take their data, we do data storytelling, we do, we do um, come up with optimizations and predictions, we do control groups to understand how we're helping optimize decisions, and then we build it into what we call a science app. And a science app is a cloud-based application that we deploy on Amazon that integrates with their back-end system, pulls data out of it, and runs it through these these um, machine learning algorithms then spits answers back into the, into the underlying system, right? So a ton of value there. The example here I've given you is just the distrib distributors and manufacturers and some of the problems that we're working on. So asset performance management, how can we pull this granular level of machine data off all of these, you know, if you're in a production plant, all of the machines that are running in there, the vehicles you've got running around, and help optimize the the return on these assets, you know, their reliability, predictive monitoring, and so on. We're doing a lot of inventory optimization. This is where a lot of customers are asking us to focus. How can we pull inventory out without impacting production and service levels? We're doing a similar thing in pricing. How do we help drive the top line? So these are, these are the types of things we're doing. We're pulling millions of past purchases in. Um, we're starting, you know, if you look at the way distributors do it today, it's very much based on heuristics and lots and lots of spreadsheets. So they group customers based on arbitrary things like the amount of money they spend with us um, or where they're located in the country or the size of revenue that customer has and then attach by product sort of what they, you know, what pricing it should be versus based on things like um, the elasticity, right? So what is the customer's responsiveness to price changes and things like that. So the reason customers don't normally do this and they manage by averages is they just can't operate at that granular level of data level, right? You know, customer product location. We're able to crunch through millions and millions of permutations automatically with our algorithm, come back with truly optimized prices. So that's an example of one solution um, that we're doing. We're applying this in healthcare. Again, this customer was at yesterday. We're looking at how do we help 
how do we help optimize supply chains in healthcare? Um, if you look at supply chains in healthcare, they're way behind other industries, and bringing um, predictive um, techniques to the industry, right? Right now, you know, when you look at a hospital, it's based on kind of when you use something, you reorder it, versus looking at a care plan, when, you know, we've actually got procedures forecast. If you know what material is going to be used as part of that, feed that into a demand forecasting algorithm and use that to actually pull inventory down the supply chain. So there's a lot of things we're doing in, in healthcare as well around this and other industries that we're focused on. So we're excited about these guys. They, they can have an incredibly disruptive, um, positive impact for our customers.